Hey, good afternoon, Pastor Key. How are you today? I'm well. Good afternoon. How are you? Uh, doing pretty good. I'm excited for today. Today is uh, series number one, dash one. It's the yes. first episode in a series where you are going to talk about uh, living single and practicing self-control while you're living single. I'm excited uh, because I am single at this point. Praise uh -huh. God. And, um, yes. Definitely practicing uh, self-control. But let's tell the people who we are. I am Pastor Shanisha of Pillars of Truth. And uh, we are going to be hearing from Pastor Key um, under Pastor Key's ministries today. She's going to have a series, like I said, concerning living single. And uh, for this series, she's going to be talking about self-control, practicing self-control while you're single. It does not have to be hard. Praise God. But first, what I want to do is tell you a little bit about um, um, her church, you know, her ministries. And she's going to, um, I'm going to ask her a couple questions and then <laughs> let her tell you herself. But I know that I heard this scripture, 1 John 5. Uh, and it's going to be verses 11 and 12 it came out her mouth as her favorite scripture. Is that right? Amen. <laughs> okay. So first John, I got to read it to the people. First John 5, 11 and 12. Yes. It says, uh, and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He that hath the son hath life. He that hath not the son of God have not life. Hey, woo. Now that is firm and that is to the point and uh, it doesn't look like God played with that scripture at all. And he wanted to make it clear that we have to have his son. But tell me why that's your favorite scripture, Pastor Key. Uh, yes, amen. Uh, I had this scripture in me since I was a young girl, and uh, the scripture reminds me uh, that I am a child of God and that I am uh, professing that I have received Jesus Christ as my personal savior. And with that receiving him, that I am eternally secure, that I am locked in, um, and that I shall uh, be able to sup with the Lord when that time comes. Um, so Amen. it's so near and dear to my heart because there's a promise um, that I accepted and that I walked into between me and my savior. Mm, 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 mm. And so, um, those who are listening, they can understand that Pastor Key's ministries, that's the foundation. When you hear a pastor's favorite scripture, that means not only is it near and dear, that's how they live, that's how they move, that's how they breathe. And so I understand and I know that that is the foundation for Pastor Key Ministries. I praise God for that. And um, so we're going to get right into what we're here to talk about, yeah. you know, because I have some tough questions. Uh, and and um, this is not scripted. This is not, um, you know, so you might see some tears. You might see some laughing, you, some, mm -hmm. some, some, some of everything, you know, some mixed uh -huh. feelings. But yeah. um, certainly as one uh, living uh, the single life and um, being a what we call a single parent, single parent doesn't necessarily mean that the other person is not somewhere around. Mm -hmm. It could just mean they're just they're not in the household. And we know that in the household is where it all goes down. That's where the teaching, the feeding, uh, the healing, all of that happens inside of the house, you know. Yes. And so and sometimes the absent parent that is not in the home misses that stuff. You know, they miss a lot. They miss the, mm -hmm. the molding and the making. You know, they might help with the shaping outside of the home, but the molding and the making in the house, whoo, it's a lot, you mm -hmm. know. But um, I praise God because um, you have children, correct? Correct. All right, what do you have? I have an 11-year-old son and a 9-year-old daughter. Whew. Okay, that's heavy all by itself. And yeah. you are the only parent in the home, correct? Correct. All right. Anyway, we're going to get into um, living single. Mm. How has that uh, been going for you? 
<laughs> if I could be honest, amen. <laughs> um, it is, uh, it's challenging. It's challenging. Uh, but it is also rewarding. Mm. I put it like that. Okay. Uh, the relationship that, what's the longest relationship you've been in? Uh, 17 years. 17 years. And that's one relationship? That's one relationship, yes. Okay, do you mind me asking you your age? I'm 37. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and how long? So between what ages? Like, like so it wasn't from 20 to 37, mm -mm. right? Because yeah. you've been single for a little while, correct? Yeah, correct. Okay, what's the age? Uh, 17. Uh, till I was about 30. 29, 29, 30. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. 30. Yes. Wow. Woo. That's y'all. That's, that's all your twenties. Yes, it is. All your twenties with the same man. Yes. And you're not with them now. No. Mm. But you've given. The same man, 17 years of your life. Yes. Out of it, let's just put down for the record, out of it, you have two beautiful children. Yes. Okay, now let's get to the hard part. 17 years. Um, I'm going to say what started it. Let's not get to the hard part yet. What started that 17 years so we can paint the picture of what was or seemed to be beautiful? Um, I knew him as a child. He was more so a friend to my brothers. Um, and, you know, he would come over and things like that. Uh, tried to get my attention, but I really didn't pay any attention to him. Uh, it, we really got together uh, when he, 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 was, he got locked up and um, he reached out to me and, uh, you know, we would communicate uh, on the phone and, um, you know, go back and forth. And it, he's, he, he's a beautiful person. He's a beautiful soul. Uh, just, you know, life just happened with him. But he, but as a person, he was a uh, wonderful. Uh, we would have great conversation, um, you know, I'd talk about life and things like that. So the relationship really, really built while he was in lockup. Um, and then it progressed. Okay. And um, how long did you have to, or did you uh, date him while he was locked up before he got out? So how long was he, um, not his whole bid per se, yeah. but just how long were y'all in a relationship while he was in lockup out of those 17 years? Uh, I would say we were in relationship for about three years. About three okay. years. All right, so 14 years out of lockup. Yeah. Three years in lockup. Yeah. In the first three years you started, he was locked up. Yes. Okay, so is fair to say there was no sex involved. It was more so getting to know each other through maybe phone calls, letters? Yes. Yes, okay. correct. And uh, phone calls, letters, um, did he ever ask that you put any money on his books for him or anything like that? N not, not my, not my money. Uh, -uh. It, it, I was okay. like really working things out for him, but it was his stuff, his money. Okay. All right. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day that I could see where you would think that, okay, you have, the, you have this man's attention, mm -hmm. right? Because, um, He's thinking about you, no matter what he's doing, he's thinking about you and he's writing to you. He's calling you. And um, did you ever think that he might be calling somebody else too? Absolutely. You did? I did. Oh, why is that? Yeah. Um, uh, I, 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 I just, it was just a feeling uh, that, maybe he could be doing the same thing. Um, and then I began to see it uh, through his other people. When I would go see him, 
his other friend and, and it didn't pass me. So uh, what I was thinking, it was true already. And I was able to see it through his other people. Okay. Okay. Yes. And we, we do, we don't want to disclose who and what, right. Right. We just want to get our point across. Right. So, yeah. so I, I see where you're, you're thinking that through. So, so that um, you don't um, throw nobody under the bus. You understand? So I, I get that. Uh, so that time though, even though you kind of had, we can't really say kind of, cause it's, it's a red flag, right? However, in the beginning, uh, the feelings that you have for him overrode the flag. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, did you feel like, um, like maybe you were going to win in the end or maybe you felt like that part of what he was trying to do or what he was doing was nothing and it'll be different once he gets out or anything like that or did you like did you go off the strength of what he told you or what what made you seriously like just ignore the red flag of him probably uh seeing somebody else while he was talking to you from locker uh i i, I thought that he would change um, I thought that he would realize uh, the value of who I was and what I was doing, um, and it would change him and, and steer him in a different direction. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, so it wasn't a question of um, who was prettier or uh, mm -hmm. who was better for him it was mm -hmm. more so you knew you had what it took to carry that relationship or to hold it down for a moment and then you thought that he would get out and realize this is the one for me let me stop acting crazy right right okay so let's get him out of there now now he's out let's fast forward three years yeah. he is out of lockup what did that first day feel like to you uh I was so happy. I was happy um, that he was able to enjoy himself. Um, I was very happy for him. I was more so happy for him than for me to be able to see him. Mm. Okay. But when you saw him, what'd you think? I was like, oh my goodness, you know, I could, I could touch him the way I wanted to touch him. I could enjoy him the way I wanted to enjoy him. Um, there was like, there was nothing that was keeping us apart and um, mm -hmm. I could have him whenever I wanted to. So I was, I was happy that, that I was able to do that. Okay. And so, so after the three years she gets out, you you're excited. He's excited. And um, did you think um, in that first year he was out? Was it everything you thought it would be? No. Mm. Mm. So, and I, I know what questions to ask because I've been through this already. I dealt with a gentleman locked up, you know? So I already know the answer before you even say it, I'm thinking. But I have to ask because there's so many of us that go through the same cycle over yeah. and over and over. Again. And it's about high time that we just speak about it. Just keep That's speaking right. about it. awareness to whoever, wherever you may be. Right. Um, to suggest that, look, you don't have to just succumb to anything. That's right. You know, you can wait for what's right. That's you know? right. Yes. And um, I find that most times, uh, you know, it's, it's funny the way life works for the things that we, that are absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. We don't buy a notebook and we don't write down what we want versus what we don't want. We don't write down our goals, our dreams. Mm -hmm. We might write down what bills we got to pay next month. So we don't forget, you know, yeah. we might do our homework that the teacher sent home for us to do, mm -hmm. but it's, it's like in school, they missing the teaching on the finances. They even have, uh, 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 classes on sex education. Right. Yeah. You know, health classes, hygiene, mm -hmm. but <laughs> the relational, the relationship is, I, and I get the magnitude of relationships. Everybody's different. 
everybody's hormones are different. Everybody's chemical balance is different. Everybody has different personalities, but certainly there are some red flags. There are some uh, different types of spirits that we want to engage and we want to disengage, Mm -hmm. you know, and it, it, um, it's definitely worth talking about. So if you ever find yourself in a situation, you have something to listen to and to think about before you just go with whatever you feel. Yeah. Right. Yep. Because feelings will fool you. Yes, it will. Okay? I had to learn that the hard way. I am mm-hmm. 47 years old and I know feelings will fool you every time. Yes. And then we have what they call the, um, the honeymoon experience, right? In the, mm-hmm. in the beginning of a relationship, everybody's smiling, everything is cool. Yeah. But then when you start cohabitating or you start right. putting things together, trying to live together, trying to share the same space, it starts to look different. You yes, know, it does. And you start to feel different and you have to have your mind clear as to what should I do? And you have to be able mm-hmm. to listen to the gut feelings and you have to notice the red flags, but we got to call them out. Yes. You know, we got to out because the feelings will have you defending that man mm, you know yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to defend him at all costs all yeah. because you feel like oh yep. that's my god mm-hmm. and then you're ignoring the red flags of your family trying to say no he's not right. or or your or or people around you trying to say uh-uh you don't want that or mm-hmm. they ask you a simple question to make you think about it and you right. say oh no no are you still defending him <laughs> right <laughs> Uh, we get to talk about it. That's why I appreciate your ministry so much. When you said, this is what I desire to do. This is what I have to do. You know, it's necessary, very necessary to see women as single women smile. Yes, yes, you yes. Know? And you have a beautiful smile. So when you tell me 17 years, <sighs> given to a, one man, yeah. and that's your, in your 20s, yeah. you're young, and you could have been doing lot of things yes you know yes. a lot of other things mm-hmm. however you decided that you wanted to deal with this man and so you you've had him in lockup for three years where you had his time you had his attention you know even though you still had a red flag that he might have been giving somebody else his attention through other other family members and I'm gonna venture to say you 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 probably pretty much knew that was a fact mm-hmm. but you thought he would change and then uh he gets out Y'all spending that first year together. Yes. Did he change? No. Oh, no. How you know? How you know that? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, when he got out, you know, um, there were certain things that I wanted, you know, um, and I understood that he had lost a lot of things, um, you know, but when he came, I saw that before he left, he was the same, meaning he was still partying. He was still engaging with um, other females because he had knew a lot of people. Um, And it was nothing wrong with that. But what he wasn't willing to do was to uh, have a line and say, listen, this is my woman. So I can't be without you. I can't be out with you all night. And he did those things. He come and he would stay gone with women and uh, party with them. Um, And not only party with them, he was having sexual relationships with them. Um, And uh, I guess because I wasn't that woman that was in the streets, he thought I was naive. He thought I wouldn't find out, but I was watching him the whole time. that he was doing these things. Uh, he would come and uh, he would leave me uh, like all night. He would be gone and he would leave and um, come back and uh, he'd be, uh, you know, drunk as a skunk. <laughs> uh, and I'm like, you know, and and, and, and those things uh, is what made me uh, really realize that um, uh, everything he was saying when he was in lockup, it meant nothing. It was just to keep, someone there who would listen to the sad story when there really was no desire for change. Mm, mm, no desire for change. No. Do you, um, do you think he cared about you? I do believe he cared about me. Mm. Okay. And so all this information you just gave, 
Mm -hmm. uh, you saw this in his first year when he got out. He just yeah. got out and started running crazy. Yes. And did the, you know, was the thing like, hey, I just got out of lockup. I'm just trying to enjoy myself a little bit, you know, blah, blah, blah. Or was it, um, oh, it just happened that way. I didn't mean to stay out all night, but I ended up staying out all night. Or what was the what was the thing that he said that allowed you to keep accepting the excuse? Uh, I'm a person that gives you several chances. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I was. But if my mentality where it is now was there back then, he wouldn't have got that many chances. Um, so as I said, I was really, really um, hoping that at some point he would wake up. I really was. That's why I stayed that long, even though I knew he was doing this, this, this. I was in my, you know, and, and another thing is that he said that he was saved. He was he was also he was also raised in the church as well, you know. Um, and so I would always give him that you know, uh, that chance where I'm like, okay, I understand life happens. I understand things happen and this, this, this. So I'm waiting all the while, um, just trying to see if this, if, if the life that I desire is the same life that he desires. So we really mm -hmm. didn't really have great, um, conversation far as, you know, those things. It was more of me just sitting back and watching and seeing what he was going to do to make himself better. Mm. Uh, did he ever help you pay bills? No. Like, no? No. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so we got um, first year, he acting a fool. Yes. And you've given him plenty of grace. Yes. <laughs> Part of grace is because you love him. Yes. And... Some part of that grace is you believe in him. Yes. And then the rest of it is because you have patience enough to give him time to get it together. Yes. Because you feel like you guys are compatible. Mm, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So somewhere in here, things ended. How long did you put up with it? Till the end? Yes. Yes, to the end. Was there a point where it was uh, more quiet? Like, okay, he realized I got to stop. Let me chill. Was there ever a chill period where life was great with him? No. No? No. No. Oh, my goodness. Lord, help us. Okay. So now let's fast forward to... The horror part, mm. um, because I know after so many years, you say this is the man I have, this is the man I got to deal with, and you've learned how to deal with, it, right? Mm -hmm. So you take a young lady who wants uh, the world, she wants love, uh, she wants family, she you know she wants a man of God, yes, and then she gets. Uh, she gets the nightmare. I'm going to just call mm. it what it is. Yes. She gets the nightmare. And somewhere in there, from wanting what she wanted to getting the nightmare, she says, I'm going to deal with it. So in other words, he never changed, but she did. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And so now we get to the end where here's the breakup. This is the last year of the relationship why mm -hmm. is it the last year what happened uh, a child was born a child was born and uh, that I could not accept I was fed up I, I, I you know and I think in that moment I realized that there will never be a change and um in that time, I was really understanding who I was and understanding that I had to accept people for what they believe they are. And that I had not, it wasn't up to me to change him because I had already given enough time 
And while I was standing there and helping him, he didn't receive it. So he wanted me to be the fool for however that looked. He wanted that. And I wasn't willing to accept that because while I'm looking like the fool, but to me, I'm being supportive to you and trying to get you to get where you need to get. And I understood that I was not able to do that because he didn't want it. And that he thought that he would continue to be able to do the things that he was doing. And he thought that there would never be an end to it. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't going to be an end. It had to be an end. Okay. What child are we talking about? What child? Like, what do you mean when you say um, a child happened? Like a child. There was a child outside the relationship. He ended With up another one. He had another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He had a baby with another woman. How, and how, how do you know this? How did you find out? I found out through my sister. How she find out? She found out through my mother. How did your mama find out before you found out? Through my brother. And your brother know because he's friends with He's him. in that circle with them, yes. The baby was born before you mm -hmm. found out. Yes. You never knew. Did he, he claim he ever knew that the lady was pregnant? No, he, he, he never said anything um, about it. Um, he was kind of forced. He had been cheating for a long time. Um, mm -hmm. But in this moment, he had been forced. It was a force where he was going to have to tell me I actually had to confront him on it. And um, his words were, um, I was going to call you and I was going to tell you. A phone call? A phone call. Was he, he locked up at this point? He went back to prison. Yeah. So okay, he went I was going to say, you mean you, you can't come tell me, but he was yeah. locked up again at that yeah, point. Yeah. He went back to prison. Yes. Okay, so he was out there, per se, cheating mm -hmm. and uh, tearing up the streets. Yes, he was. <laughs> uh, got caught again. Yes, he did. And went back. Yes, he did. In between that, yes. he gave you two beautiful children. Yes. And when he went back, how long had you stayed with him while he was back in there? we weren't when he went back again we weren't um I, 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 we weren't like together uh we were like actually just starting to go our separate ways it was like a break that we was on um I was not so I wasn't mean you know so I knew that he needed that um that spiritual part you know, of me, even though it wasn't really out, um, when I would give it to him and he would need it. So I wasn't really like cutting him off. Like I, at that point, I wasn't cut throwing nobody. Um, you know, so we were still kind of, uh, friends per se, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. in that moment. Um, yeah. So. Okay. All right. And then, it, and then, so, so it sounds like in your mind, uh, it wasn't totally over, right? but it was like something got to change. Right. Yeah. And then here comes another child. Yeah. So that changed the whole game. Yes. It changed did. the thought process. It did. Oh, I can't deal with this guy ever again. Oh, like that. That's how mm -hmm. you felt. Yeah. Yeah. So you were heartbroken. Yeah. And um, how old was the child when you find out? Found out? Uh, the child was just born. Was a newborn baby. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Okay. And how old was your youngest? Uh, I believe my baby had to been about one at that time. Oh. I had just had her. Yeah, she's about one. Oh. Yeah, I think she's about one. She's okay. Yeah. 
So he did he make it to the hospital to see her born? Yes. Yes. All right. Was he happy? He was. Okay. Were you happy? I was. Did you think uh, when you had the second child and he came to the hospital and everything was all right, do you think that it was going to get better from there? No. Okay. So you already knew. So you yeah. really knew. You really knew. Yeah. I'm, yeah. And you stayed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I think that um, is our time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to um, uh, do series uh, one dash two and dash yeah. two. I got some questions because we're going to talk about you being a child of God, a child of the most high. Right. Mm. Being spiritual. Yeah. Thinking that you're imparting to him mm. uh, some type of uh, spiritualness, but you're fornicating. Right. So we're going to talk about what that looks like in yeah. series one dash two. Listen, Pastor Key, it has been a pleasure. You hear me to just ask you questions. Y'all, let me just tell y'all, she just said, you can ask me whatever you want. And I said, I will. Yeah. <laughs> so we have, <laughs> and uh, we still smile. And so yes. uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to end this uh, time. Um, I'm going to let her have the last words and wrap it up how she would like, because this is her ministry. Mm -hmm. And then we'll, um, we'll give y'all series one dash two talking about her spirituality and then fornication, what that looks like together. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Pass the key. Take Amen. a side. I praise God for this, uh, for this time. And I just thank God for, uh, my leadership. Amen. Where, um, Pastor Shanisha, where she makes it possible for us to uh, just be the truth, no matter what it is, where there comes no judgment about this, because many times we're not free to speak like this, uh, because there comes with the thought process of who and what we should look like. So I praise God uh, for this space, for this love, for this growth, um, uh, that is is coming up out of this uh, Pacific time and um, that it will encourage and bless others uh, to be able to be the truth and that uh, they will be as blessed as I am to have leadership that pushes us uh, not to be ashamed of where we come from, uh, but to be able to say, listen, that was just for something because look at where you are now to produce what God has produced. So I'm excited for what God is using us uh, to do uh, within the ministries. Amen. Um, so I, I love you dearly, Pastor Shanisha, and I thank I you. Love you back. Um, just doing what the Lord will have you to do in this, and uh, I'm excited for the next episode. Amen. <laughs> me too, girl. Me too. It's, it's heavy, but I'm, I'm it's heavy, but I'm excited about it because it's going to bless uh, many people across the nations. Amen. And uh, really. Um, it's a, truly a blessing to do it. So I thank God for it. And that's all I have to say right now. All right. We'll see y'all in the next episode. Y'all stay tuned. Yes. I think I got to uh, figure out how to. There we go. Here we go.